Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mario's History Talks. It is great to be back. The long, silent winter of our discontent is finally over. Content mode is back. That means new episodes, new posts, new propaganda takedowns, everything you've been missing. I'm very excited for this and hope you are as well. And as you can see, we are still fine tuning everything from studio to lights to editing but we'll get it locked down as we go along and get it perfect. And want to stress again, it is great to be back. And just so you know, there was a method to my madness. The MHT presence has actually grown a lot in my absence with almost no work. And uh, because of that, many are stepping up to help us grow it even further now, push it into the next gear. So not to say too much at this stage, but be rest assured, many exciting things are developing behind the scenes. And as you can imagine, there's a lot that we need to catch up on since the last time we spoke, and we will get there in good time. But I want to take the first opportunity to catch you up with my meeting with, wait for it, MPO. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, the same MPO whose members create creepy YouTube videos about me as part of some bizarre descent into what can only be described as a midlife crisis. Truly concerning, many are saying this. And yes, the same MPO who thinks it's still unironically battling the communists in the 21st century. That being said, I was in historic Fort Wayne, Indiana for a Macedonian church function and I could not pass up the opportunity and the invitation to visit what is nonetheless an important part of the Macedonian American and Canadian heritage. So I came into this meeting with a pretty predetermined view of what would happen. And I was ready to go full out in debate mode if needed. Luckily, it did not get to that. I did, however, walk away with some valuable insights that did surprise me that I think you should know about as well and your understanding of MPO. So before we get started, folks, definitely take a moment now to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Follow us on social media to stay in touch as always. And if you're ready to go, let's get started. The first thing I really gleaned from my meeting with MPO is truly how decimated its membership and finances have become lately. At this stage, most of MPO is supported by renting out its retail property in downtown Fort Wayne, with the top floor being that historic MPO museum, which I of course visited. Outside of that though, it does count on its annual conventions as a major source of income, which has been canceled for the last two years in a row on the account of coronavirus. Now, of course, MPO at this stage knows it's essentially a dying dinosaur, unfortunately. It's consistent negation of the Macedonian ethnic identity continues to alienate the overwhelming majority of Macedonian Americans and Macedonian Canadians from ever joining its ranks. And this has been the case for many years actually, nothing recent. But in response to this, MPO has attempted to rebrand itself, especially under the initiative of their previous president, Jordan Lebamov, where it attempted to essentially pass itself off as a safe space for Macedonians of all national affiliation to join under their ranks, whether they be ethnic Macedonian, Macedonian Bulgarian, or Romanian Macedonian, you name it, just as long as they held the interests of Macedonia for the Macedonians above all else as their guiding principle. Seems like a pretty lenient, pretty reasonable olive branch extension at the surface level. However, there is of course a caveat to this. In the words of its current trustee at large member, Nick Stefanov, as quoted by their most recent um, Macedonia Tribune article, he basically states that MPO members should finally embrace those ethnic Macedonians, quotation marks intentionally there, as they are, direct quote here, descended from Macedonian Bulgarians, but 
evolved due to political events and political pressure outside of their control. And if we turn our attention to their current bylaws as of 2022, surprise, surprise, they still don't mention any ethnic Macedonian identity as a constituent nation within Macedonia. And honestly, folks, with open arms like this, I simply can't imagine why members are not returning to MPO. Now, the second thing I really walked away with from my visit to the uh, MPO office and talking to their leadership is that its ideas on the origins of modern Macedonians are a confusing hodgepodge of contradiction, which is itself another reason most Macedonian Americans continue to steer clear from them. They purport that modern-day Macedonians are of Bulgarian origin, yet looking through their museum, which houses an impressive collection of books, I found many titles on the ancient Macedonians, even by authors that defend the non-Hellenic identity of those Macedonians. Moreover, looking through the office, I even came across a framed poster uh, detailing a uh, traveling museum exhibition on Alexander the Great as well as another pamphlet that was promotional material for a commemorative event also celebrating the great warlord as well. And this was actually displayed on their shelf. Looking at their books, I also came across something interesting. I found their almanac from 1940. And leafing through that, I came across this little passage referring to the supposed Slavic migration into Macedonia as part of Macedonian history. That passage stated that the remainders of the Illyrian tribes in our fatherland, i.e. the descendants of Alexander the Great, were gradually assimilated from the more numerous Slavic tribes. Direct quote there. Now, there's a lot more I read in this history section that I'd like to detail with you, but we'll get to that in a future episode likely. Now, as for this information I'm showing, sharing with you now, it shouldn't come as any surprise to you, especially when you look at MPO as a whole. You know from my previous videos, I mean, they had a whole chapter named after Alexander the Great. This is out of Lorain, Ohio. And looking at their newspaper articles in their flagship and historic Macedonia Tribune newspaper, which, by the way, has been graciously gifted to me in a book form as a sign of good faith by their presidents, I, of course, took the opportunity to pour over the pages. And I found, contained in this very book, entire articles um, under the general uh, heading of Macedonian history uh, written about Alexander the Great, the ancient Macedonians, as well as King Philip of Macedonia. And then I found a particularly interesting article that posed the curious question if these modern-day Macedonian Bulgarians are in any way related to the ancient Macedonians. And this article from 1934 replied in the affirmative. They said yes. Now this screams a little, how would you say, mm, antichki perhaps? I don't know. But if we go onto their website now, they of course distance themselves entirely from the heritage of ancient Macedonia. And ironically enough, they say Albanians are their closest modern day connection. What happened there, MPO? You were doing so well. And again, they are all over the place. And this is not to diminish their Bulgarian side as well. I also found many books on the medieval Bulgarian empires, on the Bulgar Khans, even a portrait of Vasilevsky within their office, the apostle of freedom for the Bulgarians. So, it doesn't seem like there's any clear answer on these issues, does it? Not really. Which brings me to my third point, which is that there is a lot of dissent in MPO, especially around the leadership, as to the general direction and future of MPO. And this is especially relevant around the Bulgarian issue. And I mean a lot of issues there. I personally spoke to their current president, uh, Stephen Petrov, on this very issue. Um, not, he told me that not only has MPO revoked entire chapters for ostensibly being too pro-Bulgarian, as was the case with the Lubin Dimitrov chapter up in Toronto, but there's also modern day challenges and a lot of friction emitting from the spew 
of one particularly loud and boisterous member outside of their Chicago chapter. I'll leave it at that so I don't have to name any names here, but I think you know who I'm talking about. I will, however, bring up the fact that Petrov told me, a direct quote here, that don't think he, this individual, represents all of us here. In fact, they try to show me this, that the fact that this pro-Bulgarian voice isn't what, always what dominates, he showed me one of the original banners from the 1930s that they had displayed in their office that says, you guessed it, Macedonia for the Macedonians. And he pointed to it and said, where does it say Bulgaria? Where does anything here say Bulgaria? Now, in fact, he also told me a story that the Bulgarian ambassador apparently once paid them a visit. And uh, he noted that they had the original Kosturcheta flag displayed on their wall from 1912, the original one. And he commented that it should rightfully be returned to Bulgaria. And apparently the MPO response was, all right, we'll give it back just as soon as you return Pitting Macedonia to the Macedonians. Now, as I said, there is still a lot of pro-Bulgarian loyalty and patriotism visible in the office still. No question about it. And their website, their newspaper, and their members still point to this. But I am at least led to believe that the strength of this Bulgarian identity is not uniform across the organization, especially with most of its average members, many of whom have simply stuck around with MPO because it's been a family tradition, especially around the time of convention, which, let's face it, we all love to attend those. In fact, I would venture a guess that most of its members, especially the very few they showcase as their younger demographic, they have little to no understanding of MPO's Macedono-Bulgarian Balancing Act that has tried to keep up over the years. And... If I had to venture a guess, I would say they probably only see themselves as Macedonians, if that. Very few understand what's actually been presented by MPO. Now, the last takeaway I had visiting their office is that I believe it still cannot be canceled out entirely from our history, nor should we even attempt to. Yes, I will go on record and say that I vehemently oppose their Bulgarian nationalism and glorification of gangsters and terrorists in our history like good old Vancho Mihailov, good old uh, Chichko Ratko. But looking at their impressive treasure trove of archival information, documents, letters, newspapers, photographs, literally going back to 1922, it's clear they will still in a way represent that shared story of Macedonian immigrants coming to the New World at a crucial point in history. One which if they had not organized into what essentially amounted to be a vacuum in the diaspora, the Macedonian question simply wouldn't have been as bitterly fought for in the diaspora and brought to the attention of world leaders as much as it had been. And that, to me, is the ultimate tragedy of MPO. It is a tragedy. I mean, you look, at, you look at it, this is an organization that represented the collective desperation of proud Macedonian immigrants coming to America, coming to Canada from a divided, war-torn, blood-soaked Macedonia, and doing their best, their very best, with their limited means to not let their homeland be forgotten. And they created an entire organization from the ground up with every little bit that they had. But then they had that same organization eventually fall prey to outside influence, had it lose its way, and eventually turn its back on the overwhelming majority of its own people. The same ones it claimed to put above all else. And remember folks, no matter how you spin it, Tito, Yugoslavia, and those Serbo-Communists all famous scapegoats for MPO, they did not permeate into North America to force Macedonians to give up their Bulgarian identity here. It simply didn't happen. As I said numerous times before, the Bulgarian label, especially for those that used it, essentially outlived its usefulness for those early Macedonians to differentiate themselves as a separate Slavic speakers in Macedonia. And that, must, and that Macedonian identity simply outgrew the confines 
of the Bulgarian ones. Simply was too big to contain it. And that is something that MPO refuses to accept. And this is why it has become an empty shell of its former self, clinging to the scraps of a lost legacy while at the same time pointing fingers as to why others were to blame for this turn of events in history. And ultimately, any attempt to rebrand itself and go back to its Macedonia for the Macedonians motto and accept all Macedonians under its ranks, it's simply too little too late. When you look at all the decades that have spent terrorizing and humiliating the very people they claim to accept, calling them everything from Titovsi to Serbo-Communists, myself included. And while we can still appreciate the important role that MPO initially played in the history of Macedonia and in bringing the Macedonian question to the forefront of attention abroad, as we discover in later episodes, it too outlived its usefulness. So, MPO, like many things in our history, is not simply a case of black or white. In fact, anything that is presented as such, you can almost always be rest assured that it is propaganda that is simply being repackaged and dumbed down to an either-or scenario to get you to believe it. But folks, this is not going to be our last stop in discussing MPO. Plenty more to chew over in the coming episodes here, so I do hope you stay in tune for that. But shoot me a message over Instagram, Twitter, Facebook if you want to catch up. I'll do my best to get to those messages. And I'll be hard at work on the grindstone making the content for the next episode here. But uh, really, guys, it's been phenomenal seeing you once again. I do want to thank you for your patience, not abandoning me, and ultimately trusting the process. And I also want to give a big shout out to Forbidden History. You know who you are. I want to thank you for your continued support, big guy. It really means a lot. And to everyone out there, stay safe and keep fighting for Macedonia. Until next time.